fluids 15. Can you elaborate on the relation between total pressure, gauge pressure, and absolute pressure? I'm having a little trouble wrapping my head around how these parameters are intertwined. So I guess I'll answer this in two ways. One, we'll just talk definitions, and then we'll talk about the context of the specific problem, or at least the aspect of it where we're finding the delta P. So in general, we'll say that the gauge pressure plus the atmospheric pressure equals the absolute pressure. So that's just purely definitional. And the way I like to think of this is if we were measuring our height, you know, I'm, I'm six feet tall, but I'm standing on a stage. So if you measure my height from the stage, then I'm six feet tall. But if the stage is a foot high, then I'm seven feet tall with respect to the floor. So that's the difference between absolute pressure and gauge pressure. The atmospheric pressure is like the height of the stage. It's just everything is exposed to atmospheric pressure, everything that's under the atmosphere, including the system that has a gauge on it. So when we measure the pressure with a gauge, it's measuring the pressure above and beyond that of the atmosphere. If we want the absolute pressure, we have to tack on that additional 14.7 PSI or one atmosphere or 101 uh, KPA, whatever units you're using. But that's, uh, that's like the height of the stage that has to get added on because everything is standing on that stage. And uh, everything that we measure excludes that. Whenever we use a gauge, we're excluding the atmospheric pressure. But we know that to really have the absolute reading, we've got to add that back on. So that's the definition. In this particular problem, we're dealing with a hydroelectric turbine um, that's fed by water, which is like a pump acting. It's a turbine acting like a pump in reverse is kind of the way I think about it. So I'll draw it like this. And we have some known pressure coming in measured by a gauge. That's a perfect chance to use that definition, 50 PSIG. And then on the outlet side, it's being discharged to the atmosphere. So the pressure of the atmosphere, if there was a gauge, it would measure zero. So the delta P is 50 minus zero. Um, another way to think about it, uh, it would be, yeah, it would be zero PSIG. That's really the right way to think about it. So it's easy to be off by a little um, if you forget this relationship. But the fact that that pressure is, uh, as long as you're consistent, you can subtract. So when I do this problem, I say 50 PSI gauge minus zero is 50. Another engineer might come along and say, that's not how I think about it. I think about it as to get absolute pressure, I have to add my 14.7. So it's 64.7 PSI A, because I want to work in absolute terms. Fine. Then the atmospheric pressure is 14.7 PSI A. And so what's the difference? Still 50, 50 what? 50 PSI. And we no longer have to specify that it's gauge or absolute because it's a delta P. So it's just PSI. There's no particular reference. 